There are many different ways to hit a golf ball. It's amazing how many seem to work. But when it comes to the care and maintenance of your golf car fleet, there are really only two ways to do it, the right way and the wrong way. The right way keeps your golf cars looking and performing like pros for as long as they're on the job. The wrong way can lead to major problems. We hope this video helps you recognize the difference between the right way and the wrong way when it comes to maintaining your golf car fleet and getting the most out of your investment. is cut, the pins are set, the golf car fleet is ready to go. But how about the people in charge of maintaining your golf car fleet? And how about the players who will be driving those cars? Are they ready to protect one of your most important assets and themselves? It never hurts to review the basics. They may seem simple, practically no-brainers in some cases, but reminding your staff and your players can head off a lot of problems. To start the vehicle, turn the key to the on position and make sure nothing is in your immediate path. Check the vehicle's direction by placing the forward reverse handle or switch in the desired position. Slowly press the brake pedal to disengage the park brake automatically. Press the accelerator pedal more to increase the car's speed. Most of what you need to know about driving or riding in a golf car is common sense stuff. Things like making sure no more than two people are riding in the golf car at one time. Operating the vehicle only from the driver's seat. Steering clear of trees and low hanging limbs. Keeping your entire body inside the vehicle to avoid injuries and remaining seated while in a moving vehicle and keeping a grip on the handholds. Drive slowly on slopes, always going straight up and down rather than at an angle, and avoid slopes with more than a 20% incline. You should also avoid sudden stops and starts and abrupt turns, which could cause injuries and damage the vehicle. And just as you would in your automobile, Reduce your speed when you encounter wet grass or rough terrain, or when you approach a turn. To stop the vehicle, release the accelerator pedal and press the brake pedal with your right foot until the golf car comes to a complete stop. After stopping the vehicle, firmly press the park brake pedal until it locks. Turn the key switch to the off position and place the forward reverse handle or switch in the neutral position. Remove the key when the vehicle is not in use. Gasoline powered golf cars require some additional precautions. When driving a gas car, keep your foot on the accelerator pedal when going downhill. This helps engage what's known as the car's motor braking feature and keeps the car moving at a safe speed. For gasoline vehicles, after staff removes the key, also turn off the fuel shutoff valve. Sometimes it's necessary for staff to tow a golf car or several cars. Towing requires some special equipment and precautions. For single vehicle towing, use a club car light duty tow bar. Use a permanent tow bar when towing more than one vehicle. When towing more than one vehicle, it's necessary to use a tractor or heavy duty vehicle with proper tow hitch height and never tow more than five vehicles at one time. Before towing electric vehicles, turn the car's key switch to off and place the forward reverse handle or switch in the neutral position. For club cars IQ system vehicles, Place the tow run switch in the tow position to allow the wheels to roll. For gasoline vehicles, turn the fuel shutoff valve to the closed or off position. 
Whether you're towing gas or electric cars, do not exceed a safe speed of five miles or eight kilometers per hour. And never allow people to ride in any vehicles being towed. Properly charged batteries are one of the most important factors in the performance of your golf cars. By the same token, improperly charged batteries can lessen the lifespan and affect the performance of your fleet. Batteries should be fully charged before a new vehicle is first used, after vehicles have been stored, and before releasing vehicles for use each day. Even if batteries have been used for only a short time, even as little as 10 minutes, they should still be fully charged before returning to the course. But before charging, you should take several precautions. Since lead-acid batteries contain explosive gases, always keep sparks and flames away from vehicles and the service area, and never smoke while charging batteries. As we all know, battery acid can cause severe burns, so wear protective clothing, like rubber gloves and safety glasses, while working around batteries. And keep acid away from your skin, eyes, or clothing. Some people might not realize it, but new batteries require a break-in period. They must be discharged and recharged 20 to 50 times before they can deliver their full capabilities. In their first two months of operation, new batteries in Club Car's IQ system electric vehicles should be limited to 36 holes. To charge batteries, insert the charger's DC plug into the vehicle receptacle. The charger will turn on in just a few seconds. Club Car battery chargers interact with the vehicle's onboard computer. This compatibility allows the computer to record the amount of energy consumed during vehicle use. With the charger plugged in, the vehicle's control circuit is locked. This prevents the vehicle from operating and the possibility of damaging the charger. When the lockout is activated, the charger turns on and the onboard computer begins recording the number of energy units being returned to the batteries. When the amount of energy needed to replenish the batteries is returned, the charger shuts off. Like most things, batteries need water to survive. Improper fluid levels can cause batteries to fail prematurely. To prolong battery life and performance, check the electrolyte levels in batteries on a weekly basis. If they need it, add water to batteries only after charging. An exception to this rule is if the electrolyte level is below the top of the plates. If it is, add just enough water to cover the plates, charge the batteries, and then check the level again. Never charge batteries if the plates are exposed above the electrolyte level. For maximum battery life, use only distilled water. Several devices on the market will filter out impurities. While not enough water can adversely affect battery life and performance, overfilling can be just as harmful. Club Car's single point watering system saves time and prolongs battery life by making sure batteries get the proper amount of water. The operator simply attaches the water supply to the vehicle coupler and waits for the flow indicator to stop rotating, which means the battery is full. The operator then disconnects the coupler with a push of a button and moves to the next vehicle. It's fast, simple, and a very effective way to make sure you're watering batteries properly. Batteries should be kept clean and free of corrosion. To clean batteries, use a one-to-one -one solution of baking soda and water to wash the tops and terminals. Rinse the solution from the batteries without allowing it to enter the batteries. Then be sure the terminals are tight. Some of the same precautions and safety measures you take when fueling your automobile apply when fueling gasoline-powered golf cars. First, make sure you turn off the vehicle by moving the key switch to the off position. Wait for the engine to cool before adding gasoline to the fuel tank. To locate the fuel tank, which is on the driver's side of the vehicle, lift and remove the bottom seat cushion. Remove the fuel cap and fill the fuel tank with fresh unleaded gasoline. 
To allow for expansion, do not fill higher than one inch from the top of the fuel tank. Don't fuel near an open fire or smoke while fueling. And be careful not to spill fuel on any part of the golf car or yourself. Replace the fuel cap and tighten securely. Replace the seat bottom. Now you're ready to go. It's important to keep your fleet looking its best. A sharp looking fleet makes a statement about your course. What's more, dirty unkempt cars also can hide other more serious problems. When cleaning your cars, be sure to use the products recommended in the owner's manual. A firm plastic bristle brush is great for removing fine sand and dirt from tires, floor mats, and other textured surfaces. Refrain from using silicone-based products, such as Armorall on floor mats, pedals, and seats. These products can leave surfaces slippery and lead to accidents. Battery acid, fertilizer, tar, asphalt, creosote, paint, or chewing gum should be removed immediately to prevent possible stains and permanent damage to the clear coat. Use only automotive grade wax-free cleaning products applied with a clean soft cloth on all smooth surfaces. We recommend avoiding usage of ammonia-based cleaning products for cleaning the windshield. These type of products have a potential for scratching the surface. A garden hose at normal pressure is adequate for most cleanup jobs. If using a pressure washer, make sure to keep the fan spray at least six inches away from the surface you're spraying and keep the pressure under 1,000 PSI. A lot of the damage that happens to golf cars doesn't happen on the course. It happens inside the storage facility, especially in storage facilities where cars are often packed into tight spaces. Too little space also discourages proper rotation of your golf cars and wastes staff time. We recommend that the parking layout inside the storage facility allows for a first-in, first-out, single-lane directional flow of cars. This type of parking arrangement practically eliminates the need for cars to back up or turn and also supports a proper rotational sequence. Using Club Car's communications display module is another way to promote consistent rotation of the fleet. Among other diagnostics, the CDM provides an instantaneous summary of battery use. By knowing the number of energy units that have been displaced in the car's batteries, the golf staff can stage the fleet to equalize the use each car in the fleet is getting. Club car vehicles are known for their reliability and durability. They stand up to most anything the course and golfers dish out. But that doesn't eliminate the need for regular maintenance and inspection. We recommend a daily inspection to reduce downtime and keep your fleet performing at the top of its game. Be sure that all nuts, bolts, and screws are tight. Check for proper tire pressure, wear, and damage. Make sure batteries are filled to the proper level. Check battery post. Wires should be tight and free of corrosion. Look for cracks, loose connections, and frayed wiring in the charger cord, plug, and receptacle. On gasoline vehicles, check the engine oil and fuel levels. Check for leaks in the fuel tank as well as the fuel lines, cap, pump, filters, and carburetor. This daily checklist as well as periodic service and lubrication schedules are also shown in your owner's manual. Club Car is dedicated to bringing solutions to customers that help them operate more efficient and successful businesses. We hope you found this video helpful. Each of the subjects we've discussed in this video is covered in greater detail in the owner's manual you received with your fleet. If you don't find the information you need in the manual, we encourage you to contact your authorized Club Car dealer. On behalf of everyone at Club Car, we appreciate your trust and your business.